Okay, you guys have been spamming me to react to 1 million subscribers. And I mean a bunch of you guys have been spamming me. I mean basically just two of you and a bunch of you is liking it because like I'm not that big. And for me, if two or more of you are spamming me to react to something, then that's a lot. So yeah, this is actually going to be the first time I've heard Ren speak um, outside of, you know, maybe his um, monologue on Hi Ren. I already kind of get the vibe that Ren's a very like, like Broski is very smart from what is from the gist I've got from him and I'm actually very curious to see like how he's gonna what he's gonna talk about how he's gonna define success I just have a weird feeling that this is gonna be really really profound I don't know uh, don't forget to subscribe turn on post notifications and see more videos like this and uh, smash that like button and let's react together let me watch. that being said let's get straight into the video let's go I want to keep this short and sweet because I wrote something that I want to share with you. But um, okay. first of all, I just want to say how grateful I am. He's really um, I've reached a million subscribers on YouTube, which is a flipping huge milestone. Hey. Um, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who supported my music over the years, whether you're newly on board or have been here for a while. I wanted to say thank you to the YouTube reaction community who have oh. gotten behind my stuff in a big way and really helped me reach this goal. So oh. thank you, guys. <laughs> oh, I mean, look, Ren, you didn't have to be thanking me. Thank you for putting out just amazing content. And naturally, you know, when you put out stuff that is just good, people are gonna be attracted to it, do you know what I'm saying? And I was one of the few, especially after high rent, I was taken aback. I was um, in the midst of like, you know, uni exams and someone uh, like from my Tom Madonna reaction told me to check out Ren. And then since then, you know, I went deeper than high rent and I checked out a lot of his other music and yeah, man, just I'm just I'm I'm just slowly slowly falling in love with this 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 character that he is. Well, cause I I don't know I say character because I don't know him personally, but this Ren that is being portrayed, I'm starting to slowly really really become fond and admire. So shout out to Ren, man. You shouldn't be thinking me. I should be thinking you, man. Got on behind my stuff in a big way and really helped me reach this goal. So thank you guys. Um, yeah, I wanted to read this 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 passage that i wrote about success is too much for me Damn. to remember right now so right. bear with me but yeah right. give me success to me means that i have a responsibility that transcends me oh. if i have a platform where people are paying attention then i feel like it's my duty to make that count oh. it's far more important than my aspirations with music and what i could personally gain there's a saying that stuck with me recently which was a rising tide lifts all ships Somehow, by finding success for myself has meant that I can find success for the people around me. Uh, and that makes me feel very rich. Wow. I'm in a very strange position right now where I owe much of my success to the most destructive force in my life, which has been the turbulence of my physical and mental illness. The thing Social that has by or... far brought me the most pain has been a source of constant, constant inspiration, which ironically led to creations which brought me the most joy. Them ones. Creating art, which means something to somebody else and can potentially be a companion to somebody else in the dark, justifies my own pain. And I desperately needed that to be justified. Uh. There are a lot of people alive today who live in the dark. It's a place that I'm very familiar with. In the peak of my health problems, I was severely underweight. All my meals had to be restricted and blended. And I was so tired that I couldn't participate in life. I couldn't socialize, I couldn't watch films, I couldn't read. My bones constantly hurt. Even standing in the shower was excruciating and exhausting. Oh. And this went on for years with no answers. Nobody could have ever convinced me during that time that my pain and suffering would be a source for something good because it felt insidious. Nobody could have ever convinced me that something constructive can come from hurting every day. Damn. But I'm here to tell you, that if you are hurting every day, don't be afraid. One thing I know to be a certain, to be a constant law of the universe, is that life is inconsistent. Life is beautiful and life is hideous. Life is kind and life is cru cruel. Dancing inside this dichotomy and inconsistency makes me know that you won't hurt forever. Whether that comes from resolution of what you're going through or acceptance of where you are, oh. you won't hurt forever. You don't know yet whether or not your pain conceals gold. It definitely conceals wisdom and it's definitely a catalyst for filling you with empathy. So stand strong, my friends, and don't let the darkness consume you because once you know the dark and become intimate with it, you become very capable of wielding the light. You could be instrumental for changing this world. For
Not, I'm not even gonna. I'm gonna talk after this video. Let's just let the video speak for itself, man. Definitely a catalyst for filling you with empathy. So stand strong, my friends, and don't let the darkness consume you. Because once you know the dark and become intimate with it, you become very capable of wielding the light. <sighs> you could be instrumental for changing this world for the better. There's nothing humble about shrinking or doubting yourself because you are large. You can be ferocious and you could be magnificent. Wow. For the medical industry, who too often let people fall through the cracks, it's your duty to do better. Ooh. For the people living in the light, who have either stepped out of their shadow or have never had to walk beside it, it's your responsibility to pull out, put out untainted love. Mm. Our own greed, desire to ferociously expand and decisions rooted in self-interest can benefit ourselves in a material sense, but can be very destructive to the hive and the world around us, ultimately hurting ourselves. So we really must consider that if we're going to step into a bright future. As <laughs> Yo, who is this man? <laughs> what am I watching? Am I watching one of the greats? Is you know what I'm saying? This is like this is I don't know. This might be history in the in the making, man. This is a speech. Oh, that put out untainted love. What you just said right Our there. own greed, desire to ferociously expand and decisions rooted in self-interest can benefit ourselves in a material sense, but can be very destructive to the hive and the oh, world around us, ultimately hurting ourselves. So we really must consider that if we're going to step into a bright future. As humans, we have an incredible potential. Oh, that's, and oh, God, that's so deep. That's so deep, man. No, everything about this has been deep so far. And I love the way, that's a very nuanced point that I think a lot of people miss that logical step. They think, okay, let me um be very selfish because you. a lot of people, I guess, operate from that mindset, but you don't realize by being selfish, it never seems to be affecting those around you, which is never seems gonna affect you in the end. So being selfish doesn't really benefit you as much as you think it is. That right there, right, is food for thought, man. That is, a lot of men need to hear that one. Oh. Consider that if we're going to step into a bright future. As humans, we have an incredible potential and it would be a shame to throw it away. So community, humanity, and changing our relationship with the natural world so it leans more towards homeostasis must be a priority, priority number one. Oh. If you're watching this and there's a knot tied up in your stomach with bitterness, anger, or hatred for your fellow human being, be with it, feel it, understand it express it and then let it go you're hurting give yourself love forgive yourself and then project that love outwards and the anger will pass we have a decision in every interaction to tilt the world towards heaven or hell towards Jana or jahannam utopia oh. or dystopia and some people's ideas of heaven will be another's image of hell so tread carefully but treat those differences with respect Tapestries are made beautiful because of the variety and the sum of their parts. <laughs> Thank you to one million people inside this rich tapestry for the opportunity for me to try and spread my own vision of what I believe to be good. And thank you for justifying my pain. Thank you. I love you. Well, bro, I love you too, man. That was great. That was... Great, that was wow. Uh, okay, Jay Flex, what do you have to say about that? Yo, first of all, that I just want to say, yo, I was not expecting that. You can tell he's got like a pure heart and he generally wants to do what's good for the world. And he's he just comes across so genuine. I'm sure he is genuine. He was even almost tearing up in this whole speech. But this almost seemed like a very holistic kind of message for the general, like talking to like people who I guess had maybe anger built up inside and then people who had, or who were going through suffering. And he almost gave like really sound advice on, you know, how to go about it and how to deal with it. I guess, you know, in life, struggles don't tend to ever go away. I think this utopia that everyone wants to get to in their head just doesn't exist, right? It's, it's this constant back and forth, like he was saying, of decisions you make. But you just get to a point where struggles never go away. You just get better at dealing with the struggles so they don't feel as impactful. Yo, Ren said a lot of things. And even that quote at the beginning where he was like, you know, um, a rising, I don't want to butcher it too much. He's like, a rising tide. There's a saying that stuck with me recently, which was a rising tide lifts all ships. 
he's realized through his success he's been able to lift other people up and i feel like now he's taken it on himself which he doesn't have to by the way like no one's no one's asking him to do this he doesn't need to be doing this right now which I, which is very remarkable and brave even for him to even like put himself in the front line and say you know what instead of me trying to like you know maybe wait for someone else to i guess say the right thing well i'm gonna i'm gonna take initiative to be the change i want to see i'm gonna make that speech even though i don't have to with this platform that i have to try and make a change and that's really brave and remarkable and profound using his illness to, as a source of light using it as a source of wisdom to help others go through it what more like this man is in is is incredible man and we need more people like him in this world that are going to uplift others around them and be at least a, i guess a change for good because it's very rare in this day and age i mean wow for me on a personal level like i'm like i'm a young man growing up in this day and age and when I'm looking around, I'm seeing a bunch of men getting, all of my friends getting involved in all of this hedonism and I'm seeing social media purporting this like very, uh, you know, detrimental message that's just really te tearing away at so many men, so many of the younger generation. And it's hard, like it's rare to see people that nowadays kind of be that source of good, almost be like a role model, you know what I'm saying? And even me as a young man, like Ren is definitely someone that I can learn a lot from. And, I, and I'm just saying as a personal thank you to, mess, to Ren for that because it's because of people like him that make people like me want to really think deeper about the world or even take a leaf out of his book and be an, another change I want to see, uh, be the change I want to see in the world, you know. And to other people that I might be young that watch me and go, okay, look, Jay Flex isn't this typical, you know, Gen Z guy that's just messing around and he's actually trying to do something, you know, and don't get twisted, of course I'm still young and there's an onus is on trying to like, you know, not take life too seriously, but at the same time, it's going to come a point when life is going to get serious, you know, and when it does, if you don't have anyone, it can be isolating and you can make a lot of a lot of mistakes. But when you got people like Ren dropping knowledge bombs, dropping wisdom, being an example, leading by example, talking the talk and walking the walk, it makes people like me even less fearful and gives gives me more hope. Thank you for that, Ren.